a great mixing console for larger venues, the medium sized to larger churches, medium sized to larger bands and uh, educational facilities is the 32.4.2 from Personas. This is a fantastic digital mixer with a full 32 mic channels in and 14 auxes out with all the digital effects processing that you've come to expect from Personas, but more. There is a full Linux computer contained inside of this. There is tons of memory for all the effects and the memorizing all the scenes that you want. This thing has new features that you're going to want to know about that make it easier to run this board than any Personas digital board in the past, including the ability to compare channel settings and the ability to easily match the fader level to the memory. So let's take a look at the board starting at the channel strip. This is the channel one strip right here, and we've got the nice 100 millimeter fader, and we'll go ahead and start right at the top where you have the mic line trim control. Mic line trim control is right on an analog type control. So you go ahead and plug in your mic or plug in a tape deck and you can control that CD player, whatever, the level coming in, the uh, mic line control or the trim control is like a water valve. It tells you how much or you tell it how much signal to let in so that you get a nice distortion free signal. You can easily grab that. If you're using a condenser microphone that uses phantom power, you simply press that control and provides 48 volt professional grade phantom power to the microphone. If you're using digital inputs, and Personas in the past has used Firewire interface between the laptop uh, or computer and uh, the console. Now you can see this D because they have a slot on the back of the mixer. And it will use Dante, it will use Thunderbolt, or use Firewire by simply pressing that button I'm now routing the digital input signal rather than the XLR microphone connector quarter inch jack on the back. I'm routing the digital signal into this channel. Okay? Then it has 14 auxes, as I said before, 14 auxiliaries. So I have plenty for in-ear monitors, for on-stage monitors. I can solo that channel one aux and see what's on that. I can pair them up. If I go ahead and select that and I go down here to a link button, you can see that the second one is, so I can have two aux channels paired up for stereo monitors. Then I have a mix control, how much, that's the level control, and I have the pan control, panning it left to right. The post control, this is a pre-post control, so what feeds the auxiliary from this channel is either after the fat channel effects of compression limiting and EQ, or before it. So typically you have pre, but I can select post, and now I'm feeding the signal after my effects and after my EQ. As I drop down here, this is the fat channel. The fat channel extends from here to here and is where you adjust your EQ, compression and limiting for each channel. So I'm gonna select channel one right there. And first of all, I'm gonna take care of the high pass filter. And I'm gonna run the high pass filter if I'm using a vocal microphone typically at 100 hertz. If I'm using an instrument microphone, say for piano, on the low end of the piano, I might run that down to 24 hertz or so, or I can go off. If I'm using the high end of the piano, I may, if I'm using two microphones, I want to run this high pass maybe up to 420 or so, so I can take out most of the low frequency from the high microphone on the piano. Easily adjustable, you can see it right there. And of course, any of these settings on the fat channel, you can put into a library or memory. So if I have a, a vocalist and I have all the settings of compression, limiting, and uh, EQ the way I want them, then I go ahead and put that into a channel library, name it Ron, and the next time that person is up, I go ahead and recall that setting, and those settings will all come back. The next area is the gate. And this is great for drums or uh, microphones that are in a high noise environment. I can set the level at which that channel will turn on and accept a signal. For instance, the kick. When the kick microphone uh, uh, is triggered by the sound of the kick drum, I set the threshold so that the channel opens up, I get a nice kick sound, and as soon as that's off, as soon as that drops down, then I go ahead and release the channel and it cuts it off so I don't pick up any other noise. So that's the gate, and I can have that on or off. It's very easy, as you can see. Next thing is the compressor over here. Compressors are great for vocals to go ahead and ride some of the dynamics, keep the vocal sitting right 
at the, uh, at the top of the mix, if I, especially if I have a lead vocal, I can, can help control that. Um, the, it's easy to set. I go ahead and I have a, an attack and release. The attack is how fast it comes on. The release is how fast it comes off. The compressor threshold and the amount of compression ratio. So if I want two to one or three to one, I want the, the more compression ratio you have, then it clamps down on the signal fairly quickly. If I go to a one to one type of a control, then I have no compression ratio whatsoever. So the compressor, again, I turn it on. I can have a soft knee, or if you want to, you can go auto and let it set some of the settings. Right? I have a limit control here, and this is I just simply set the threshold. That's a high limit. That helps you in case there's some uh, unwanted signal. If somebody grabs a microphone, drops a microphone, shouts into a microphone, that's a hard limit, and you can set that level. I usually keep that out, but for some people, they like to have that as a safety control. And then this section now is my EQ section. I have a master on switch for the EQ, and then I have an on switch for low, low mid, high mid, and high. So it's four band sweepable EQ. So let's like take a look at the low. Typically in the low EQ section, you want to have a shelf control or you want to have a parametric control. Most people are used to a roll off. So at the low end of the sound, I want to roll off some frequencies. I press the shelf control button. I say I want to have that control at about 185 hertz or so, and I want to take out some gain. I want to take out minus 6 dB. I set it right there, away we go. If I want to use that as a parametric EQ, then I can change the width, take the shelf off, and now the width control, wider or narrower, comes into play. Uh, and it, it'll take a notch out of the uh, signal or it'll provide a little mountain of boost depending upon how I set the control. Same thing with the low mid. Here you don't have a shelf control. It's either you're creating a, uh, a rise in the frequency response at this frequency or you are creating a dip at the frequency, in the frequency response. You set the frequency here, you select plus or minus gain from zero. You can see two, four, six, or eight dB of boost, or I'm going down and I have two, four, six, eight dB of cut, and here is how wide that boost or cut will be within at that frequency. Same thing on the high mid, and on the high frequency, again, I have a shelf control. If I wanna boost my high frequencies and ramp them up, then that's what I go ahead and I put a six dB ramp in there, uh, maybe at a very high frequency, say up at 12K, just to provide a little bit of air. Or if I've got a little sibilance uh, in a vocal microphone, I may want to go to shelf, a 6 dB uh, per octave cut, and just have a roll off starting at about 6K or so, just to take some of the sibilance, the very high frequencies out of that. All of these settings are easy to save. You load, you copy it into a bank, the settings bank, the channel bank, and these settings will be memorized back in, okay? Now let's go back down. We have the pan control, okay? I can pan to center if I have two channels selected, or I can pan left and right if I go ahead and wanna make uh, a signal all the way to the left or all the way to the right. The solo control allows me to listen to an individual channel in my headphones or go ahead and mute it here. So this is my channel mute. These two channels are paired or linked. I can go ahead and unlink them. Oop, there we go. Select, link, now I've got it off. So I go ahead and unlink those and then I can turn them on and off individually as you can see. Okay? Now, like I said, a nice 100 millimeter fader. So you can get smooth fades as you bring this up or bring this down. Unity gain right here, you've still got 10 dB of adjustment, or you've got a nice 80 dB or so of fade to fade down the signal. Again, all these settings can be locked in to the memory so I can recall all the settings on the board, recall all the levels. Let's move over here to the master section, take a look at it now four submasters and a master here. So I can route any of these channels into these four submasters. What they've added on the 32 are mute groups up here. So I can go ahead and 
take a mute group channel one and I can select channels to put on the mute group and then when I hit that mute group it'll mute those channels so that's real handy to go ahead and set up uh, six mute groups so I may I have I may have my back line on one go a mute group so I can mute all the rhythm instruments and the drums I may have vocals on another mute group and then I simply turn those on and off rather than recalling full settings now I can do that as well but for a live mixer, having mute groups right here is really nice to have. And mix scenes. Again, I can have a full mix scene, and rather, go, rather than going in and dialing in the library here, I simply assign scenes to one of eight buttons, and when I recall those, up they'll come. Okay? You have full onboard effects. You have reverb, uh, you have delay, uh, you have all the effects you'd expect in a digital console. And you have inputs for uh, two track in, your monitors, your phone's master, uh, you, your auxiliary, you can route a talk back microphone to the auxes or the mains. Now one of the really cool features about Personas digital consoles, the sound, the Studio Live consoles, is the graphic EQ. When I press the graphic EQ button, let's go ahead and pan back on here and see. I have a 31 band graphic EQ, and that goes from here to here. So all 31 bands are represented, and I can adjust those bands of the EQ right on the controls. You can see here. And then every one of them is represented right there. I can store that in. Your graphic EQ can be used to equalize your main speakers, your monitor speakers. You can assign them to a channel if you want. So uh, the graphic EQ is fabulous. And again, because it's a 32-channel board, all 31 bands are visible here. Okay. The other thing that you have on the 32 that is really nice is wireless. Uh, so you can go ahead and hook this up to a router and then control it with your iPad. You can hook up your laptop wirelessly or of course you can use FireWire to hook it up. And so let's take a look at the back of the 32.4.2 console. All right, here's the back of the 32.4.2 and you can see that we have XLR inputs for the microphones. Those are balanced microphone inputs. Line in is the quarter inch, and then an insert so that you can run external effects. Now, you can do external effects, but there are so many effects on board that you don't have to do external effects the way you do with a standard analog console. You don't have to have as many of them. So full 32 um, inputs, and you can see here that because of the space limitations, we've got 28, and then we come here 29, 30, 31, and 32. There are a lot of 32-channel mixing consoles that don't have 32 XLR balanced microphone inputs. This one does. So you have to make sure when you're comparing mixing consoles that they have 32 preamps, not just 32 inputs and say eight or 10 of them are line inputs. For the outputs here, you have left and right balanced stereo outputs. You have a mono output with a separate level control. There's your input for your talkback microphone so that you can talk to in-ear monitors, you can talk to uh, auxiliary sends on the platform, wet platform wedges, uh, or to, uh, if you're doing recording. And then of course you have tape inputs, the main outputs, the auxiliary outputs here to feed to your on-stage monitor mixes or your in-ear monitors are here, and you can feed subgroup. So all of that is available, and then you have your direct outputs, and this is the new thing here. See, this is a card, and this card can be pulled out. Here's your FireWire connections, but other cards will be coming for Thunderbolt, uh, for Dante, and other forms of digital communication, so this can be networked in the future. So you're future-proofing your mixer by having this kind of a card system available for the future. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this up. So the Personas 32.4.2 mixer is an ideal mixer to consider when you need 32 inputs, medium-sized church, educational facility, 32 mic inputs, 14 auxes. You've got all the digital effects that you need, a full computer inside, future-proofed with Dante, Thunderbolt, and FireWire connections, and built-in wireless. Go ahead and put that into a router, hook it up with a router. You can, it'll have full iPad control and it'll have full laptop control, recording capabilities, upload to Nimbus. This becomes a central console for all of those things to happen. 
You can go ahead and take a look at more details at ccisolutions.com. Simply click the link at the bottom or give us a call for the best price available. The 32.4.2 from Personas, a fabulous digital mixer for live or recording use.